and they started adding a constant dosage of antibiotics to their feed just to keep these poor wretches alive. This overuse of antibiotics breeds super strains of resistant disease-causing germs. Every day we get closer to an epidemic that cannot be stopped. Ew! What's that smell? Twelve million pounds of excrement. This pollutes the air and groundwater. That's why communities near factory farms often suffer from high levels of related sicknesses. Well, it smells like shh. And what's more, factory farming corporations have been destroying communities and mistreating their workers for decades. Since 1950, over two million small hog farms have disappeared. If they continue at this rate, there'll be no real independent family farms left. That is the Matrix, Leon. The lie we tell ourselves about where our food comes from. But it's not too late. There is a resistance. Count me in! Washington, city of politicians, policymakers, lobbyists, and activists. Think of the seals when you buy your milk. Boycott Canada. Today, a demonstration against the seal hunt is held at the Canadian Embassy. Think of the seals when you buy your meals. This demonstration was organized by the Humane Society of the United States, America's largest animal welfare organization with 10 million members. 30 minutes later, I have an appointment on Capitol Hill with Wayne Purcell, the president of the Humane Society. Hi. Hello there. Hello Hi. There. Welcome to the United States. Welcome to Washington, our nation's capital. Thank you. And we're so proud of what you've accomplished in Thank Holland you. with your election. We all took note last November of how you were elected, and you're the first party for the animals in the in the world to yeah, achieve this. Yeah, true. So, thank you. And thank we look you. forward to learning about what you've done. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> nice to meet you finally. You're the biggest organization on animal welfare. Yes, we, we are. We have 10 million supporters here in the United States in terms of paying supporters. Yeah. And then, of course, we have millions more who believe in what we're doing. and. We're here to organize that sentiment to mm -hmm. achieve political reforms for animals, okay. among doing other things. We we try to pressure corporations to do the right thing, and we educate the public, and we do hands-on care of animals as well. But the political work here in Congress is very hey. important. Hey. <laughs> you guys quit. One, two. Factory farming is the biggest abuse of all. Because in the United States alone, there are 10 billion animals raised for food. It's an extraordinary number. And the average American eats 80 or 85 animals per year. And we want to see that number reduced. And we want to see the animals out of these terrible confinement systems. Why do you think Al Gore didn't mention factory farming? You know, I, I think that he probably thought that, that um, he was giving a lot of information already. Mm -hmm. to people with an inconvenient truth and maybe he thought people would shut down if it affected them too personally because it gets very personal when you're talking about eating animals and you're talking about something that is part of the American diet I uh, thought oh well, this is going too far but the public is slowly waking up I do not believe that we can have a good situation for animals or the environment if we continue to eat as much meat as we are eating. But even if you reduce your total consumption by half, and instead of eating 80 animals, eat 40, you cut in half the greenhouse gas emissions. So we do think that our fork is a powerful tool. So they're clear about this in the United States. The power lies with the consumer. As consumers, we can make a difference by changing our diets. Matt Prescott says that meat is the number one cause of global warming, and he gives a good example of this. If every American ate no chicken for just one day a week, then this would reduce just as much pollution as taking 500,000 cars off the road. <laughs> It's funny. 
Okay, I can hear you thinking meat and other animal products are bad for the environment. Ah, I get it. But don't we need meat and milk for our health? Where else do we get the calcium for our bones, the iron for our blood, and the vitamins and minerals we need to keep us healthy? Advertisers and food producers have done so much to indoctrinate us that you nearly end up believing. The message is clear. Milk is essential. Meat is good for you. Cheese is healthy for us all. But who benefits most from meat and dairy products? The consumer or the producer? Do we really need all that animal protein? Generally speaking, there's not a real problem for health if we have much lower meat consumption and there are potential benefits. I mean, after all, colon cancer is one of the commonest cancers in high-income countries and the risk of colon cancer is higher with high meat consumption. So there'll be a real benefit in terms of lowered colon cancer risk, for example. Going from our level of consumption to something that's just a bit below half of that uh, would not involve any significant health harms and would almost certainly bring health benefits. As you probably already guessed, I'm a vegetarian. I actually used to like eating meat quite a lot. But that was until around 12 years ago when I saw a Dutch TV documentary called What the Cow Wants. It contained some really bizarre footage. This... Penskunnen jullie zijn een paar jaar geleden gemaakt. En daar kunnen koeien heel lang mee blijven leven. Soms wel meer dan tien jaar. Die, dat is eigenlijk is dat een gat met een diameter van een tien centimeter. Daarin zit een siliconen ring met erin geklemd een deksel. Als ik nu druk, dan moet het mogelijk zijn om deze deksel naar binnen te drukken. Nu is die open. De deksel is eruit, kan eruit. En hier hebben we dus een gedeelte van de grassilage die het dier zojuist gegeten heeft. When I saw this, for me that was the very limit. Animal diseases, animal suffering, animals that were no longer treated as living beings. I had seen it all. And I thought. No, not in my name. I want no part in this anymore. En zo kan het dekseltje er weer op. In the factory farming industry, animals are adapted to the food that we choose to give them and to the massive stalls in which they are forced to live. They are mutilated, they are giving antibiotics to stop them getting sick. Pigs are now sometimes even given anti-stress pills to help them cope with their unnatural living conditions. Yet the fact that it turns out that livestock makes an enormous contribution to greenhouse gas emissions by belching, farting and defecating doesn't necessarily mean that we'll start keeping fewer cows, pigs and chickens. No, the industry will simply dream up something new. Would you believe it? They now even make fist-sized pills to stop cows from farting so much. But you know, consumer resistance against factory farming is steadily growing due to increasing awareness of animal suffering that it entails. And sometimes you come across people from an entire different background who surprise you. It was in America that I met a man who is known as the mad cowboy. He was a factory farmer who got out of the livestock industry and went vegetarian around the time of the mad cow disease crisis in Europe. Hi, nice to finally meet you. Nice to see you're unlost again. Yeah, finally, we made it. My humble abode. 
Thank you. It's nice and warm here. This is this is on the farm, and uh, this is one of the dogs we had, which was Sam, good critter. That's the farm.